Gorgeous girls love to read. Hey guys, it's Ermina and welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new, you should totally check out some of my videos and subscribe. In today's video, so if you came along and you're into the mood to read but you just don't know what to read then you have come to the right place because i got nine book recommendations for you guys that you guys should totally check out now most of these are kind of like contemporary young adult romance in that category not all of them are like like that but like some of most of them are just to give you an fyi but I thought, so I've been reading since like about September, October-ish of 2021. I mean, I've been reading longer than that, but that's like when I really started to get back into reading. So I read a book and I was like, oh my god, reading is so much fun. I like, I always thought that reading was like for nerds. And then I realized why people thought reading was so fun. But actually i am so excited to share these with you guys so i have nine books for you guys but i actually only own like two of them because yeah i got most of them from the library just to save up money and that kind of stuff so and enough of me babbling let's just get started so i kind of lied we're not getting started exactly so right here we have a little i'm sorry that's my hair but we have a little journal where I keep all my books in here or not my books but like book entries so basically what I write in them is I put down the book title and I put a short summary of it and then I put my favorite parts of the book and then I put a book cover reading and then a book rating itself and I have about nine in here I'm currently on my 10th book right now since October 2021 or whenever I did start reading it was like I know it was like at the end of the year last year but but anyway what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use my phone to set a timer because last time I recorded this I ended up making it too long and I don't want to make this too long so I put a timer for two hour, two minutes and 30 seconds so now let's actually get started also I have some notes right here just to help me out all right so the first book is girl in pieces by kathleen glasgow and just a trigger warning if you want to read this book there are mentions of sexual assault self-harm suicide drugs alcohol domestic abuse and a lot of other serious topics so just to keep you guys aware so basically this is about a book it's oh, obviously it's a book but it's about a girl named charlie davis who's in a treatment facility with other people who have engaged in self-harm and almost killed themselves but she is learning to deal with herself there and then she, whenever she's ready or when she is ready she does get released and she's forced to make her own new life in arizona on her own completely but the good thing is she lives near her best friend mikey who she does have kind of a crush on but she's also dealing with the past trauma with her family and is basically forced to cover on her own. So she also kind of like meets people who struggle with their own trauma and a big topic in there does include sobriety. And, it, and she's a big artist by the way so art helps her a lot with her struggles. And I really, I this book was so touching. Like it, it, it was like so heartbreaking and like it just like hurt to like see the scenes like yeah i did cry but it was like so like i loved how each of the characters were like so broken and cruel to themselves but they were also like willing to like better and like improve themselves which is why i loved the characters in this book yeah i really love this book i gave the book cover reading like a 4.5 out of 5 because it, it looks simple at first but once you see the title and like the little red graphics over like the the, the 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 cuts i'm sorry i can't speak today but once you see those it really like resembles what the book is all about and i know not to say to judge a book by its cover but like once you read the book then you kind of have to judge the book by its cover i guess not that that's not that doesn't apply to all books but now i see why the cover is like that but i actually love this book so much for my first book that I read that got me back into reading, I gave it a 5.5 out of 5. Alright, 
The next book is Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon and it is actually one of the books that I own so I'm so happy because it is absolutely my favorite book. Ever since I read it, I've declared it my favorite book and I literally have not stopped. I've always like kept telling myself that this is my favorite book and I always believe myself and this is my favorite book. Okay, enough about that. Let's give you a little summary. So basically, this follows a girl named Rowan, who is an academic rival with Neil McNair. And they've been academic rivals since the beginning of freshman year, and it is their last day before graduation. And basically, Neil wins valedictorian, and Rowan still wants to take him down. So she has one last chance to take him down, which is at the senior event, like right before graduation, called The Howl, which is basically a big game. So, and apparently a bunch of seniors are out to get them, so Rowan and Neil team up so that they can, either of them can win at the end. And they learn a lot about each other, like absolutely a lot. They didn't know about each other while they were rivals. And they learned a lot about each other and they learned so much that they could have developed a potential friendship or been best friends while, during the time that they've been rivals instead of rivals, or they could have been something more. I don't know. You gotta read to find out. But, oh my god, I love this book, and I'm gonna tell you why right now. First of all, it took place in less than 24 hours. The amazing character development there has been in less than 24 hours. Wow. I, unbelievable. Also, I love how like their relationship was developed in less than 24 hours oh my god and also i really loved how rachel did a great job of portraying like the scariness of graduating because rowan is actually a romance novel writer she is writing a romance novel in this book i won't tell you guys what it's about but i love how she like portrays the struggle of graduating on here i gave the book cover a five out of five because it's like it's it's cute first of all and like I like how it portrays today, like where they're far apart and then tonight they're closer and then tomorrow they're like closer. <laughs> but actually I gave this book like a 10,000 out of 5. That's how much I love it. Anyway, I love this book and I really think you guys should read it. Alright, the next book is It All Comes Back to You by Farnaz Rishi. And this is the first book I am going to be showing you guys with surrounding a, a South Asian main character. Two South Asian main characters actually because this it they do have like alternating like povs or you know what i mean but they do have alternating perspectives which is i love when an author does like like you get two perspectives from like two people and how they see their lives like differently from the other so basically this story is about kiran norani and dean malik and they're basically they dated like three years ago but then dean ghosted her so basically they run into each other again after three years because Kiran's sister Amira is marrying Dean's sister Faisal, which is super I don't know. But it's a lot of it's interesting. So basically Kiran overhears Faisal talking like about his like shady past with his best friend like at a restaurant. So basically she hears a lot of stuff that she doesn't like and that could potentially destroy Amira. So she does everything in her power that she can to destroy the relationship in order to save Amira apparently and to take down Dean, which is mainly the reason, re main reason why I think she did this. But she just ended up hurting more people in the end and she found out the truth about Faisal, which is not at all what she expected. But anyway, this is a, this is a pretty good book, I gotta say. For a first time surrounding a South Asian character, I really liked it. Yeah, I, I I absolutely loved it. I loved like they how they made questionable choices, which is why I gave it a lower rating than I could have. That's all part of character development, and I love how they realized their mistakes at the end. And then I love how like um Kiran and Dean were willing to do anything for their siblings. So I gave the book cover a four five out of five actually, because just look at it. It is so pretty like so pretty 
And then the book reading itself, I gave a 4.5 out of 5, again, because of the questionable choices they made. But other than that, I really loved it, and I think you guys should definitely read it. All right, guys, so I know we're kind of in a different location. I mean, we're in the same location, but I'm wearing something different, and this is because when I was filming this, when I was start editing this, I realized that two of my clips were missing, and I don't, don't know why. I still don't know why. So I didn't really feel like figuring out why, so I just decided to refilm this part. But it's only two books, so it doesn't really matter. But the next book that I read was Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. And this is more of a fantasy book. It is a little more magic focused. So let me just open my journal to the page that it was on. There we go. So basically it's about a girl named Evangeline who's willing to do anything to stop the love of her life, Luke, from marrying her sister, which is super odd, I know. But she's so desperate that she has to go to the Prince of Hearts, who is Jax. And basically he is a fate, which is basically an immortal creature in this universe. So basically they make a deal and she has to give three kisses to other people and obviously not to him but like to other people but basically after the first kiss that she makes she learns that she has made a deal with an immortal which is extremely dangerous and jack has like so many plans set up for her that could take her on the wrong path and put her life in jeopardy and it's pretty interesting i gotta say and i really like how their chemistry like their chemistry is absolutely phenomenal like, I never thought, like, a chemistry between an immortal and a mortal would be, like, wow. It is absolutely incredible. And also, I really liked how the plot was, like, very magic-focused. It was very focused on the prophecy that was made and, you know, magic. Actually, there is, like, a sequel coming up to this, which is why it, like, it left me on a cliffhanger. It'll probably leave you on a cliffhanger if you read it. But there's a second book to this. I think it's called The Ballad of, Ballad of Never After. And it is coming out, I believe, in September, so I'm super excited for that. I gave the book of reading a 3.5 out of 5, just because it's like, it's kind of cute, but like, it's also like, I don't really like fantasy book covers for some reason. I don't know, it's probably just me. But then I gave the book rating a 4 out of 5. It was kind of slow for me at the beginning, but after I really got into it, I really enjoyed it. And I really think you guys should read it. So the next book I read was Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. And it's the first Coho book that I ever read. And let me tell you, for my first Coho book, it was absolutely incredible. I absolutely loved it so much. And so basically it ha does have more alternating perspectives between Morgan, who's the mother, and Clara, who is her daughter. So basically it follows their life story where Morgan is determined to protect her daughter from making the same mistakes she did and Clara also doesn't want to end up like her mother they have like very contrasting personalities like they're like they're somewhat alike but like they like aren't completely alike and it's like contrasting between each other so basically it's very difficult to coexist but after Clara's father aka Morgan's husband Chris gets in a tragic accident then they're basically forced to find comfort in other people because they can't find comfort in each other and it's it's their struggle to pick up the pieces that were left after the mess and they both find comfort in different love interests like Clara gets a love interest and then Morgan gets an unexpected love interest and I love Morgan's love interest by the way and Morgan is also very determined to keep Clara from knowing the truth at all costs whatever possible there were a lot of misunderstandings and it was very difficult to mend the relationship but i love how like every coho book has like a good ending so i was so glad that this book has a really good ending and the ending literally it was so, the ending was so touching like let me tell you and the plot twists in this book were absolutely incredible i did not expect any of these things to happen in these books and also i really liked how coho like incorporated into like a, a young adult kind of romance into it you know i love young adult romance so i really like that she incorporated that into there and it was filled with so much emotion and heartbreak and then this book was like really light like it was a light easy read yet it was so powerful and it taught us like like really good life lessons and i really love the relationship between claire and morgan it's like 
I really liked seeing the mother-daughter relationship, which I feel like you don't really see in a lot of books. Anyway, I'm going to shut up so I can tell you guys my book I'm reading. It was a 4.5 out of 5, because first of all, it's super pretty, and then second of all, after you read the book, you understand what the book cover actually means. And then the book itself, I gave a 6 out of 5. That's how much I loved it. Alright, now I promise we're going to go back to the original footage. Alright, the next book I read was Zara Hussein is Here by Sabina Khan. And this is another book that surrounds a Desi main character. So basically Zara is a Pakistani Muslim immigrant who's 17 years old and lives in Texas and goes to a Catholic high school. So basically she has always been trying to stay like low key in her life. Like not to like get into too much trouble because that could interfere with her family trying to get their green cards, which they've been doing for like about nine years now. Yeah, nine years, I know. But basically Tyler, who's the star football player on the team, she, he takes things a little too far, actually a very too far. But like she, he threatens her with a note on her locker, which later on leads to a very, very racist, Islamophobic, xenophobic, whatever act of racism and vandalism on her garage door. So basically this leads to a very violent crime that does involve Tyler's dad and basically it it jeopardizes Zara's future and the future of their family. So at the end they must pick like pick between where they want to stay which is in the US or back at where it all started which was Pakistan. So I felt like this book was a little bit rushed, honestly, because it was only about like 250 pages, and it covered like uh, it covered a couple of topics. So I felt like if the book was a little bit longer, then we could have gone more in depth into all these topics that were happening. But other than that, it was a really good book, and I feel like I love the way that Sabina Khan addressed the topics on racial prejudice, xenophobia, Islamophobia, and the immigration system. She did it like really well. So if you want to like learn more about that, then I really recommend reading this book. And I really loved like the relationship between Zara and her parents and how it's just so loving and accepting. So basically I gave the book cover a 5 out of 5 because look at Zara. She's like so pretty. I know, I'm like a fangirl over her, but, and then the book, actually I gave it a 4 out of 5 because then again, it was like kind of like, is a little too short for me, I feel like it could have been a little bit longer and more in depth, but other than that, it was a really good book. Alright, the next book is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, and wow, this book has been super, 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 super popular, like for a, over 6 months now, and... Oh my god, I understand why I got the hype. So basically, um, just a trigger warning, this does have acts of domestic abuse and sexual assault in here. But basically, this is about a book, or it is a book. It's about a girl named Lily, who she has come a long way. She's like, I think she's like 23 when she like starts, like in this book, it's like at the beginning she's 23. But she's come a long way from her hometown and she's kind of like trying to rebuild her life because her father recently passed away. And she moves to Boston and starts her own business there. And then suddenly one day on a rooftop, she meets this guy named Ryle, Ryle Kinsaid. And suddenly everything is a little too good to be true for her. Like she is absolutely in love with Ryle. And he's like kind of like an arrogant guy, but like he has like a soft spot for her. So basically, they get into this like relationship and all and then during her relationship she reveals like like she like starts thinking of her like past love who's atlas corrigan and oh my god i love atlas i love 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 love, love atlas i love atlas but her thoughts of atlas it kind of like challenges her relationship with ryle especially when she comes back so she's just struggling to Sorry. She's just struggling to keep that relationship stable. And okay, it, this was such an emotional roller coaster. I did not expect it to go this way. Like, I love it so much. And also, I feel like this is like one of those like books where like you understand the book cover after you read it. But I'll talk about that when I get to the book cover reading. But 
her writing style in this it's like so incredible as well as with her writing like colleen hoover's writing style in general is just so good and this is the second book i've read by coho by the way i will tell you which coho book i think i'm going to read next after this but i love the writing style and i literally love lily like i love her so much she is such a strong character and her character development is absolutely everything i can't believe how she handles the story it's so like incredible like i love her i really wish i could just give her a hug like she's just absolutely incredible so the book cover i gave for this book or the rating rather i gave it a five out of five because well you'll understand after you read it but it's honestly in general it's just really pretty and then you'll understand after you read it why it is that way and then the book rating i gave itself was a six out of five because it's absolutely incredible i understood all the hype it got and I know I was actually kind of debating on whether I'd put this or not, but if you haven't read it yet, then please read it. If you have read it and would like to chat about it, then go DM me on Insta or find me anywhere and then we'll talk about it. But I absolutely love this book. All right, so the next book I read was Serena Singh Flips the Script by Sonia Lali. And this is the last book I'm mentioning in here that surrounds Aranda Desi main character. Serena is a 36 year old Indian Punjabi character and she has her complete life in control. She's a very independent woman and everything is going to plan for her. She just got a job as a creative director and advertising firm in DC. I know, super specific. So basically, she doesn't want to get married and like have kids like the rest of her family. So like she's kind of like avoiding like the status quo and she doesn't really want that, which I really love about her. <laughs> Anyway, at her workplace, she meets her coworker Ainsley, and they like instantly connect and they become best friends. So from kind of like the relationship she, or friendship rather, she kind of like sees like relationships differently, and she realizes that she's been so focused on her career that she hasn't been prioritizing any of her time really to her to the relationships that she has, including her boyfriend, her friends, her family, and basically everyone. And she realizes that learning that letting people in can like actually make you happier than just standing on your own, her own, which I absolutely love and is absolutely true. So I really liked this book because it has a good life lesson that adults like Serena, she's like a 36 year old woman. They don't really have kind of like their stuff together and like teenagers always think that adults have their stuff together but like i really love how this portrays that they really don't and are still like trying to figure out their life and that kind of stuff and serena does really struggle in this book like but i really loved how she developed at the end and let more people into her life and opened up a little bit more and i really love this self the message of self discovery and relationships in this book so basically i gave the book cover rating a 3.75 out of 5 i know that's like the most specific rating i've ever given but i feel like it's just it looks like blocks like it looks like it's just like it looks like it's just like a basic painting basically but i really liked like how they like portrayed her like big neck tattoo on there i just really liked that about serena and then the book in general i gave a 4 out of 5 because i felt like it was a kind of like a little bit slow at the beginning I was like it it sped up like I got into it but I didn't I didn't get into it as much as I thought I would it was still a really good read though and I think you guys should really try it out, read it, and read it all right we got one last read in here and that is Beach Read by Emily Henry now this is also a very popular book that is also very popular on book talk and so I thought I might try it out so basically this is about a a girl about 29 i think her name is january andrews and she's a romance writer who was very challenged with her father's death about a year ago and her boyfriend breaking up with her so she's been like pretty like in a depressive state for a while so she um gets her father's beach house in some lake in michigan i forgot what the place is i'm i think i'll go look it up later but she goes there and basically her next door neighbor is augustus everett or gus for short who is basically her like kind of like rival i guess they didn't really like each other but they went to college together 
and basically he is more literary fiction so it's like more dark and that kind of stuff so one hazy evening super specific i know they decide to swap genres and read book and read uh, write a book so basically january has to write literary fiction like make it more dark and that kind of stuff and then gus has to write a rom-com they take each other on trips to like kind of like help each other out so basically january takes him on like a romantic trip and then he'll take her to like meetings about death cults literally they do that but instead of more competition they have with each other they kind of learn more about each other that they didn't know and um yeah they definitely don't fall in love they really don't but um i'm not sure so maybe read the book so you can find out but I really love the sarcastic dialogue between January and Gus. It just it just adds a great like it's like a great component to the character and relationship to the book development that they have with each other. And I really like I love January and Gus. I like I love both of them. They're like both so oh my god. I love them like so much. I really wish I could just like see them in person. So like I really like I like they're like those type of people that like from, like, they're like a celebrity or like a character that I really want to meet in person but it, the story was more like a like a comedy like a rom-com and like had more com comedic and witty plot that like it really got me hooked into which I don't really see in a lot of romance novels but like I really loved the comedy and the wittiness in this one so the book of reading I gave a four out of five because it was like for, it was like really colorful but then it's not the best one, but I did really like it because it was like really cute and colorful and bright and happy and that kind of stuff. The book itself, I gave a 4 out of 5 because I just, it was kind of, it took me a little while to read, honestly. It took me like 6 days where normally it took me like about 3 or 4 days to finish a book, but this book took me 6 days. It was probably because it was like finals week and also I was busy with auditions and that kind of stuff. So maybe that's why it took me a little bit longer to read. But other than that, it was still a really good book and I really like would recommend that you guys read it. So those are all the books that I mentioned, but that is not the end of it. So I do have a little bit more book recommendations from like books that I haven't read yet and that I'm currently reading, so I will list those out. So the book I'm currently reading right now is Love From A to Z by SK Ali. And the two other books I got from the library that I will be reading next are They'll Never Catch Us by Jessica Goodman and All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven. But I also have a list of books that are on my TBR list and so I'm only going to list out five of them. Or actually, I'll list out seven just to give you guys a freebie. But the books are Reminders of Him by Colleen Hoover, which is basically her brand new book. I am so excited to read it. And then There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. In Five Years by Rebecca Surley, The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave, You'd Be Home Now by Kathleen Glasgow, November 9th by Colleen Hoover, and The Wish by Nicholas Sparks. And so those are all the books that I will be mentioning in today's video. I will be linking all of these down below in the description, so make sure to go check them out. So if you want to buy them, then you can buy them, or if they possibly have them at your local library, maybe you want to save money, then check out your library or your school library for that fact anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video if you have any more book recommendations that you think i'd like or think that maybe someone else would like and if you think that anyone would like then please comment them down below because i really want to see what you guys recommend and if you want me to do another one of these videos i feel like when i like read like a couple more books after this then i will do like another video so if you guys would like to see that then i will definitely do it in the future so this is technically like an episode one so i feel like later on i do an episode two so thank you guys so much for watching if you really liked it please like go comment down below subscribe to my channel turn on post notifications so you don't miss an update and i will see you guys in my next video bye